Hello folks, long time no see. Now, in YouTube terms, I've been out of circulation for a little while because I've recently moved house. Now, I have moved house a few times now, and it doesn't get any easier, let me tell you. I'm sure some of you out there will know exactly what I mean. In fact, it gets harder. Why? Well, because over the years, I accumulate more and more stuff, and my joints creak louder now because I'm a few years older than the last time I moved house. Now, this is a buyer's guide, and some might say it's a strange buyer's guide. And you'd be right, actually. Moving house is such a rare occurrence. So, why do you need a guide? Because, well, when it does occur, and most people will go through it at least, well, once in their life, I would say, you are never really prepared for it, even if you think you are. Now, I always try and prepare as much as possible, which is a good thing. However, I'm always surprised or blindsided by something or other. That is, at some point, the moving process will surprise the hell out of you. So, this guide then. Well, what I'm about to say will be obvious to some of you, familiar to many, and others might flat out disagree with me, and that's fine. What I do, what I did, works and worked for me. Tell me down there in the comments what works for you. Also, if I miss anything out here, and I will, you can be sure of that, then please add your help and hints again down below in the comments to increase the knowledge base, as it were. So here's 12 hot tips and hints from me to you for moving house with a hi-fi and a vinyl CD cassette tape slant, you might say. Here's number one. Number one, redirect your post and update your address details. Now, this sounds like a rather obvious general point, but it applies specifically to any hi-fi or vinyl you might have ordered or will be ordering soon. It's also especially useful for long-term Kickstarter projects you might be supporting and half forgotten about. Change the address on that account as well as Amazon and any other favorite retailers that you support. As for postal redirections, well, I redirect for a full year. Now that's to prevent possible fraudulent behavior from anyone occupying my old address. It also gives me time to change the address for anyone I might forget about, people I might hear from every once in the blue moon. Number two, packing vinyl, and you can include books, and you can include CDs, and you can include cassette tapes in this one. Now, there are impressively dense materials wandering the universe. The core of the sun springs to mind an element called neutronium. Google it. Neutronium is another one. And then there's the biggest of them all. There's a box of vinyl, which is so dense it forms its own gravitational pull. It's true. You open a box of vinyl and music fans from miles around will be drawn inexorably towards this single box. Now, if you are moving house, I would advise to keep the vinyl container boxes small and numerous. I would not advise packing a box larger than 18 centimeters by 13 by 13 centimeters. Any larger invites a hernia or a split box leading to spillage and damage. And if that ever happens, you make sure you call the police the fire brigade and the UN. Number three, moving hi-fi with original packing. This one is pretty simple. So let's assume you're employing a removal company to help you out. And please, if you can, or if you can save for it, then ask for help on the move to retain your sanity, if nothing else. Now, if the removal men are doing that job, Pack your hi-fi in its original box. You did keep the original box, didn't you? That box will retain the internal molded packing material. Uh, you did keep the original packing materials, didn't you? 
number four. Okay, let's say you didn't. Let's say you didn't keep the original box, and let's say the internals disappeared five minutes after you opened it in the first place. You can move such items yourself, even if you have employed a third-party company to handle the overall move. If you've got fragile hi-fi elements, well, the back of a car or a small van, say a rental van, with lots of soft padding and cushioning will do nicely. Now, doing it this way, you can employ your own third-party packing materials. You can spend time securing delicate areas such as, well, I don't know, tone arms to the cradles using metal twist ties. How about dangly toggle switches, which are just itching to be snapped off? Well, they can be protected by foam or similar. Now, by all means, protect your cartridge's stylus with a cartridge protector, some plastic molded stuff which clicks onto the cartridge. Now, to stop that falling off or being flicked off, secure that with some low tack tape and that will keep it in place. In terms of speakers, well, if I'm putting speakers in the back of the car, I tend to stack them with the drivers facing each other. So the drivers themselves are not actually visible to the outside world. They are facing each other. So you only see the sides and the back of the actual cabinets. They're just a few of my simple tips, but I'd love to hear yours again down in the comments, if you would, please. Now, moving hi-fi is a stressful operation. So moving these delicate items yourself will enable you to keep an eye on those components during the journey. Now, you can also make sure you moderate your speed to the new property to minimize nasty road bumps. Choose a route that avoids uneven road surfaces and the like to minimize component shock. Now, I transferred a host of turntables in this way using everything from old duvets and pillows to towels and blankets and even cotton wool for small components. Anyone watching me from afar would have thought I was going camping. Number five. Well, unless your speakers are specialist, fragile, or an awkward shape, why not ask your removal team if they will pack your speakers for you? Some companies will include this service in the basic price they will charge for your move. They will provide a padded blanket type covering that are, well, they're kind of boxy speaker shaped really, so they fit nicely over your speakers. They have similar coverings for your TV and maybe other electrical goods, but I do know they can, well, most people can provide covers for speakers. Now, that doesn't help people like me who own things like Quad 57 electrostatics that are shaped like radiators but it will cover most hi-fi systems. For oddly shaped speaker cabinets like my Quad 57s, I use lots and lots of bubble wrap packed out to around, whoa, I don't know, between five and 10 layers, probably nearer 10 to give a lot of cushioning, depending on the speakers, of course. six, if you have to dismantle a hi-fi shelving unit, then bag the connecting bolts and screws and whatnot, seal that bag, and then tape that very bag to part of the shelving unit itself. It's amazing how easy it is to lose bolts and screws during a move. Number seven, if you own a lot of physical product and you thus own a lot of shelving, consider a two-part move. Consider not moving everything in one day. Move the shelving first. Get that in place. So explain to your guys, your removal company, you want all of the shelving done first, you follow them to the new property, and then when they've gone, you spend time arranging all of your shelves exactly how you want to see them in each and every room. And then that job is done. Now, if you don't do that and you ship everything all together, then you might not be able to get this shelf to that wall because there's a whole stream of boxes in the way. Now, I'll come back to that in a second. There's a linked hint for that. But before I forget, 
number eight. This one sounds obvious, I know, but well, I've heard stories. If you are moving valve tube based equipment and you can remove them, then please do so. Remove those valves and tubes before you ship the item and store those valves safely in a separate padded box or boxes, assuming that the valves, as I say, can be removed, of course. Now, hopefully, you will have kept the original valve packaging boxes, but if not, then wrap and seal each and every valve in lots too much bubble wrap layers, and then gently pack each in an overly cushioned box. We're talking about valves here, very, very thin glass. Overly cautious is good. Similarly, I would also remove cartridges from turntables if you can, putting them back in the original boxes ready for shipping. If that's not possible, or if you're not able to remove the cartridge at all for some reason, then cover the cartridge with its stylus guard, secure that guard with low tack tape, and wrap the entire cartridge head shell area with some cotton wool or soft sponge material or something suitably protective. Always keeping an eye on the cartridge stylus and making sure that's always covered as you're working. Now, number nine, when packing vinyl and CDs and cassettes before sealing the box, make sure there's no spare room in the box itself. Most of the time, there will be no spare space if you're packing all your stuff, and there wasn't in mine. I think the only one which had spare space was the one at the very end. However, if that happens, fill that gap with packing material like scrunched up pieces of paper, your removal company, your team, they will supply that for you. Also, bubble wrap, and they'll supply that as well. And then the physical product can't jiggle around, damaging itself during the move. Number 10. And when you have sealed each and every box right on top, describing the contents so you know what's inside. And that should prove useful when it comes to unpacking. Similarly, sort of 10B, you might say. Print on the top of the box where that box should be moved to in the house itself. So, should it be moved to the lounge, for example? And if so, right on the top of the box, lounge. If it should be moved to the office, say you have an office, then again, right on the top of the box, office, listening room, or spare bedroom, or garage, right on the top for each and every one. This will save time during unpacking. Do this labeling with pieces of furniture too, such as your hi-fi racking system or your storage shelving. So which shelving and tables go where? Let the removal men worry about putting the right items in the right rooms. Number 11, how do they know which room to put your labeled boxes in? How do they know where each box goes. Well, before the move occurs, travel to the new property and put large, easily seen labels, print them out in big, bold, capitalized type, and sellotape those labels, those signs, outside each and every room. So the removal men will know what boxes to go in which room. So actually print out the word lounge or listening room, or if you're a bit fancy like me, studio. For example, on a piece of paper, tape that piece of paper to the doorway of the lounge or next to it on the wall. And the removal men will then place all the lounge tagged boxes in that room. And that will save you a lot of time. Finally, number 12, when you're moving house, now is the time to properly damp your listening room or listening space. This is a unique opportunity when the room and the house itself is empty. So try to dampen before the move occurs. I have made a video on damping your room on the cheap. Link above and I'll put one below just in case you're watching this on TV. Now, if you don't damp your room properly before you move everything in there, 
then you risk all kinds of sonic anomalies, such as peaky midrange, screechy treble, or boomy bass, created by the room itself, not your hi-fi. The room can do this on its own. And if the room is producing these icky, wicky, sonic anomalies, that will fight. It will conflict. It will go head-to-head -head with your hi-fi system for years to come. Then you'll forget about the room, you'll blame your hi-fi for that iffy sound, and then you'll upgrade to something else, and it still won't sound good. Why? Because of this darned room. Because it hasn't been damped properly. So to prevent many years of sonic discontent and discord, spend just a few hours on your listening space and save yourself a whole load of headaches. And that's it, folks. Thank you very much for staying to the end of this video. Down below, if you can do me a favor, click on the like and subscribe buttons. That will help this channel enormously. Now, it's nice to be back in the saddle, as it were, and I'll be producing videos from now on. I'm surrounded by boxes and sellotape, and I still don't know where everything is. I'm still tweaking my hi-fi so it sounds as it was, and all that kind of stuff. But I'm getting there. I'm getting there. So anyway, lots of catching up to do. You may have noticed I'm catching up on my music alerts videos because they've still been coming in even though I've been packing and unpacking and moving they've still been coming in so as has the hi-fi so I have a, a list a queue of hi-fi to review for you so lots to do lots of catching up anyway downstairs also check out in the description links to my Facebook group which you're welcome to join my brand new website it's still brand new it's still shiny and it's uh, very nice indeed, very professional looking, even though I say so myself, check that out. Uh, much easier to use on mobile phones, couldn't think of the word, mobile phones and tablets and things like that, than the last one. Uh, is that it? Oh, my Patreon page, where you will find Hi-Fi News, etc. Got one this week, that's new out, newly minted and lots of other stuff on there, lots of buyers guides and hi-fi tour videos and things like that, and archive things as well, from my past hi-fi magazine reviews, all kinds of stuff. Check that out. It helps to support this channel too, keeps it going. Anyway, I'll be back on Friday with another Music Alerts video, and hope to see you then. Until then, folks, bye-bye for now.